I'm George Brigman, art teacher at Bonner Elementary for Tyler Independent School District. The following video is about watercolor techniques. Myself and all the other art teachers at Tyler ISD try to include as much of the core curriculum as possible. The use of geometry and measurement, such as the students measuring their papers themselves to the correct contest size is important. I hope you can use the following watercolor techniques to help you with your class. First thing I want you to do is measure four inches. Notice that my ruler has a little bit of extra piece right here that goes over. Uh, I need to measure where the ruler actually starts. If you're looking at that plastic part, this part is not any good. Okay, now I'll go to the top and once again measure four inches off. Come down here, I'm going to move it where I can manipulate it. Four inches, make the mark right there, and then draw the line. I actually have to take an inch off the top or half an inch off top and bottom because this paper is 12 by 18 and the, the required size is 11 by 14. So, since it's supposed to be 11 by 14 and I can't buy the paper in 11 by 14, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to worry about this part. Now, the next part is your actual picture that you're going to create, uh, 11 by 14. What I want you to do is then you can go to the tracing board or you can go to the window and do that. So after your picture is transferred to your paper, the first thing I want you to do is paint the background. You have your mixing tray. Uh, hopefully you got yours cleaner than mine. Uh, mine's not very clean um, because I want to mix paint in it. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is paint the background. When you do a window, if you notice my window, I'm showing the edge of the frame. Over here, I can't see the edge. I can see a little bit over here. Uh, a lot of people put the panes of the window in too thick, make them thinner. Um, but we're going to paint the background first. We're not going to paint the objects. We're going to paint the background first. So I'm going to paint my walls. I'm going to pick my color for those. I'm going to mix it up. Like, for example, if I was going to use the walls in here, I might take some brown over here, get a good amount of, of brown, mix in my tray. I'm going to put my tray on top of uh, the um, my picture right now. Hopefully, I won't drip on it. Mix my brown in there. Clean off my brush. Add a little white to it. <clears throat> Put it over here so I can get a lot of white. I really want to lighten up that brown a whole bunch. So I'm not mixing them together yet until I get plenty of white to really lighten it up. Now I've got a, a fairly light brown for the room. Parts of the room will have darker shadows coming down it. And what I want to do there is I'm going to touch my, my brush to the black, bring a little bit of black over here, not much, wash off my brush, and I'll work that into my brown to make it darker. Uh, one corner of it I'll leave a little bit darker here so I have a grayish brown that I can use for shadows. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that color I mixed on my tray not on the paints, and I'm going to paint in my walls. But I want you to paint everything except for your objects uh, this time. I want you to do background first. Now, where it gets a little bit darker, going inside the frame, there's a little bit of darkness there. I'm going to grab some of this blackish uh, thing, brown, and I'm going to put that in in the shadow right there when the corner bends the corner there. I'll use that as a little bit darker than what I've used before. Uh, notice when I paint, I paint with the tip of my brush. I never push it down. My brush is, is thing. if I had to move my paper, so that I can use the tip of my brush, I do so. I may have to twist it so that I can 
paint with the tip of my brush and get a good straight line. I'm using a fairly big brush. I have pretty good control of my brush. When I get to fine detail, I'll use a real small one, but I'm laying in a lot of color. I, I You can use a big brush if you can manipulate the tip enough that you can hold on to it. So I'm laying in my background color there. I wanted to show you that. Uh, and I'm going to stop at this point, and I'm going to go ahead and add some of the sunlight coming through my window. A lot of people like to draw the sun. Please don't draw the sun. That's an automatic way of losing. That tells people that you're not as old as you are. So what I need to do on the sun is show the light of the sun. The white paper is the most brilliant white. Now, in all honesty, sunlight's not going to come through this window directly because this window right here is facing south. The sun rises in the east, the front of the school, and sets in the west, the back of the, uh, the, back of the school back here. But where my art room is, we're actually facing south. So we see the sun in the midday, but we, I'm going to show it like the sun was shining through my window um, because a lot of kids like to do that. So what I want to do is I want to leave a big area of it, of it kind of white, where the sun is just really bright. And then I'm going to take my yellow, and I'm going to take it over here to my tray, take some yellow, and I, I want to even lighten it up. I'm going to add some white to my yellow, cleaned off my brush, grab some white, and so I've got a very super pale yellow. And if I'm having the sun come in, I'm not going to paint on the flowers. Hopefully not. I'm going to let some of that sun, let's see, I'm seeing the bottom of the sun here. I'm going to let the sun, most of it, be white. And I'm going to paint some of this yellow here. Coming in. And there's a good watercolor brush sh uh, book showing that. And then I'm going to take uh, a slight, the lightest orange I've got here, and put it over my tray. And I'm going to take that, mix it in with my yellow white, so it's mixed together a little bit. And I'm going to put that on the edges, the tint of the edges of it. Get a little bit there. And i got to be very careful when I get down to the flowers. I've got to paint it in between those petals, not go over it. They're going to be a slightly stronger color. Yes, they're going to be in the yellow family, but they're going to be stronger than this light coming through the window. So i got to be careful not to paint over them. I probably should be using a smaller brush right now. I have this one in my hand. I do have two more brushes. I, when I'm painting right next to those, I probably should be taking my smallest one to go in between to, because it, it will go in between a lot easier. And so when I'm dealing with it, hopefully it will paint it a lot easier. So please change brushes, change to the smallest number that you need, and go inside. Then I really want blue coming through my window. I got my sun shining there. And I'm literally going to switch the, the sky to a very light blue. Water it out quite a bit. Get it in my tray. Make it really soupy. And then I'm going to kind of join that on the edge. Try to stay in your lines. When you get up to the flowers, get a small brush. And be sure you can blot this. You can even leave some spots, but leave it real light in places, super light in others. And that will give a good sky coming through the window. And I want to paint it very carefully in between my flowers. And when it gets too hard, for all, by all means, grab a smaller brush. And 
and get in between wherever you need to go with a small brush. And we'll worry about, I'll show you about painting your objects later. I just want all your background painted, uh, but not the objects. We're going to leave the objects for last so they'll really stand out and we can work it through there. But use a smaller brush when you need to. If you notice on my brushes, I pick out very, very small brushes. At this stage in the game, no more big brushes, no more laying in heavy color. Um, I'm into detail right now and trying to get it. And I'm going to show you uh, a couple steps on kind of painting the flower to give you a little idea. I'm going to try to go fairly fast. Once again, I'll put my brush just light to the side. I have my tray. Uh, any color I use, when I lay in the yellow, even though I'm using straight off this yellow into my tray, I'm not going to paint off the yellow paint here. I'm going to put the yellow paint over my tray. If you paint off the paint itself, it gets sticky. It, it doesn't flow as easily. So if you put it on your, on your, in your tray, it's kind of like an artist palette. Put it over here. A little more water. Keep adding more color over here. This will become the thing. A lot of times I'll use one of my bigger brushes to move it over. And even though, and I'll pick a size that I think would be good to paint the uh, leaves with, about medium. And I'm going to go ahead and lay in my uh, yellow color on this flower right here. I have painted the, uh, the sky right up to it from the window, and I, I need to paint as small as I need to to stay in my line. So I'm going to paint the yellow color on these petals right here. And then I'm going to come back after those have dried. Go over and get some more yellow. And you notice I didn't go to the paint. I went to my tray. Actually, you couldn't see that because the tray was hidden from your view. But I went to the tray. Whenever I need to refill my color, I go right to the, to the tray. I do not go to... I'm able to keep the brush as a tip by um, by painting from the tray and getting new paint on there. I'm reaching over to the tray, getting new paint. It, it stays, the point of my brush will stay pointed. I'm able to use a slightly bigger brush on laying, laying in this main color. One more color. And I deliberately left this pal uh, flower for last so you could see me doing it. All right, so I've laid in the color on that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up an, another color. I'm going to put my tray over here. Hopefully, I don't get it on top of that wet flower. Um, now, I'm going to go back to my tray. And uh, this orange right here, someone's got a little dirty. I'm going to rinse off my brush and Clean it a little bit and come back again. Get some of the color off there. Get it absorbed in my brush. Wash it off one more time. Kind of get it fresh. I think that's pretty fresh now. And I'm going to put it in my tray. Now, I like to have a transition between the yellow and the, and, and the orange. So I'm going to come back and mix those together a little bit. And I'll get a yellowish orange. And that's my new color. I'm going to add in. So at this point, I'm going to switch to an even smaller brush than what I did last time to lay in my next color. I'm going to switch into one of the small brushes. And I'm going to lay in this orange color that I've got here. So I, I forgot to get that brush wet. You can take a drop a little water off there come back over here and add that second orange in there into those leaves. Um, it's always good to be looking at, at whatever you have, put the object in front of you so you can see what it looks like. Okay. 
Now, I don't go back and paint this flower uh, orange until it's dry. I go paint on other things on my picture until it's completely dry. So I've added the second stage of orange on there. I'm going to show you the third stage of orange that I'm doing. I get my tray again. This time I'm going to go with the pure orange, which will be slightly darker. I'm going to take that pure orange over to my tray, not mix it this time. And that's going to be the, the darker orange. I'm going over here with a pure orange. And I'll do this other flower very quickly, adding the pure orange. And that will be slightly darker. Once again, get my really small, one of my smaller brushes. And I uh, now I've added the, the yellow and orange. This one has the first stage of orange, but not the second. So I'm going to add that darker orange that goes in there. It's not as much. It just has a little bit here and there. I'm not trying to, uh, to cover up as much, but I'm adding that much darker orange on there. So um, these flowers have a couple different colors, and that's going to be important when you paint, especially with some of you who are doing fish. Fish have many different colors. You may, if you have a red fish, it may change to orange and yellow towards the middle where the light hits it. And I'm adding these darker streaks of orange in here to the tail end of the flower. And I appreciate you guys being so patient with me. I'm not going to, I'm just kind of showing you adding different colors and using my brush very carefully. I want to get you painting as soon as possible. So um, I'm going, to, um, the next step after I add this dark orange is for me to mix my orange and my um, brown together. And that's going to make my uh, darker shadow to separate the orange thing. So I'm going to take brown paint, add the brown over here. Mix that with my orange and add a, just a very little touch of uh, black, very little, just barely touch to it. Some kids grab too much. And that's going to give me the shadow that I need to come back in between the, 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 the flower to do the brown when I when I started to show the difference in between there. I just wanted to mix up the brown. I didn't leave this open enough and because the orange is still fresh on there, I can't paint too much of the brown, but I can use that to kind of go into my flower. That's how I made the brown color that you see in some of the other flower petals. The last thing I was going to show you is that when I, when I try to do the center of the flower, the first thing, I don't paint the dark brown first. I paint the, um, first I painted a brown and uh, white spot, and then I painted a, a black, white, and blue spot, kind of a bluish gray right here. And I dotted it. I just took my brush and took that color and went all over it and dot, 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 dot. Then I come back with a darker brown and paint it. Hopefully get a color fairly close to what I have. Go a little soupier, get it lighter. Coming in. And with a little brush, try to fix second shade of orange. I'm just going to add the extra 
browns to This is actually, you know the artist who's playing the music, that's actually George Faber. I do too. center of the flowers, I'm going to go ahead uh, where the seeds are, the seed pods. I'm going to take a little light white and uh, brown and make some dots going around it. And then I'm going to switch over to the gray and put some dots in there. That. So I created a very dark color for the inside of the bowl, but I didn't go for the straight black. Straight black draws my eyes too much, so I'm going to go with a medium black, medium a brownish black, with the darkest part being right towards the front. And that's still too black for me, so I'm going to add a little more brown to it.
the last step was that I went ahead and add the slightly darker wash on the side to make the the flower vase look round and now the picture is pretty well finished. I'm going ahead and went back and putting in the little shadow where the uh, window meets. It just needed it in my picture. So now this is the final result after about an hour of painting. Thank you for watching. Now go out and create.